Hey, my name is Scott, and I've been a professional Django developer for over a decade now. I've pretty much always been frustrated by how much boilerplate work I had to do every time I started a new project. Somehow, I found the time to build a solution. What I came up with is a utility that I am calling Django Go Boot. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Django Go Boot. By the end of the demo, we're going to have a brand new Django project with continuous integration testing, a fully functioning production server, and continuous deployment to that production server. It's just going to take a few minutes. As much as I wish Django Go Boot could take care of the entire bootstrap process from start to finish, it's simply not possible or feasible. There's a few prerequisite things we're going to have to do in advance uh, before we can use Django Go Boot. Biggest thing is we need to create the production server and get it ready to receive the automated deployments. So step one, of course, is going to be to create a production server. You can go to your favorite cloud hosting provider and create a new server. Uh, the next thing is you're going to need to create a DNS entry that points at this server. So in our demo, I've created in advance demo dot front row crew.com, this DNS entry subdomain that points at the IP address of the temporary server that I've created. Okay, so now that we have our server and our DNS entry, we need to make sure that the server has a user on it and that the user has a SSH public-private key pair associated with them that we can use to SSH into the server as that user. So I've set that up in advance. So I can just sshdggbdemo.frontrowcrew.com and you see that I am connected to the server. Right, now the automated deployments that Django Go Boot sets up are going to be powered by GitHub Actions. The GitHub Actions servers are going to be connecting to your production server via SSH and then executing the deployment process. If for some reason the GitHub Actions servers can't reach your production server over the network, Django Go Boot will fail. I think the majority of users are going to have the same basic use case I'm showing in this video, where the server just has a public IP address and that's it. In that case, this isn't anything to worry about. For more advanced use cases, Django Go Boot does have the ability to configure a connection using an SSH proxy jump or bastion host if you find that necessary. Okay, so now we have our user and we've SSH'd into the server. The next thing is the user has to have sudo privileges. They're going to be deploying a lot of applications to the server. If they don't have sudo privileges, they're just not going to be able to make it happen. Uh, at the present time, we only support passwordless sudo. So you can see here that the user that I've connected to the server with has the ability to sudo without typing in a password and therefore we can use this user for our deployments. So I've only ever tested Django Go Boot on blank servers that don't have anything set up on them in advance. If you have anything on your server already, perhaps you're using it for another application, Django Go Boot might ruin your server. The behavior is really just going to be unpredictable. So I just want to show you that if I run PS tree, you can see that there's nothing really running on this server. It is just a brand new server that nothing has been done to whatsoever. In the home folder, you can see nothing is here. You can see uh, right there is no, I press tab as many times. There is no Nginx configuration there. This is a completely blank server. Uh, I recommend you also start with a completely blank server. Uh, and lastly, uh, at the present time, we are only officially supporting Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Uh, Django Go Boot might just work. In fact, I think it's somewhat likely that it will work with other Ubuntu releases, perhaps newer ones. It also might even have a chance of working with other Debian-based uh, Linux distributions. It has no chance of working with anything that is not Debian-based. This isn't because I have some sort of bias against other distributions or operating systems. I very much welcome uh, pull requests or any help in getting Django Go Boot to work with the widest uh, number of systems possible. Uh, it's just not something that I did in version 1.0 because it's not something that I need for myself. Right? So make sure if you're using Django Go Boot version 1, 
that you are using the Ubuntu LTS. That is the only officially supported uh, operating system. All right, now that we've completed setting up our server and getting it ready to receive automated deployments, the next step is to go and create a GitHub personal access token. So we're going to go ahead over to our web browser, load up github.com slash settings slash tokens. Uh, you can also get there by going to settings and then going to developer settings and then personal access tokens. Then click the generate new token button, type in a name for your token and click the repo checkbox. This will automatically click this whole set of checkboxes. Don't click anything else. Scroll to the bottom and click generate token. This token will appear on your screen and you will have basically one chance to copy it and paste it and keep it somewhere very safe just for the time being. Uh, once you reload this page, the token will disappear and you will never have a chance to get it again. Do not let anyone else get this token. If they get it, they will have full access to your GitHub repositories. You only need the token at the moment you run Django Boot. You won't need the token again afterwards. So if you're paranoid, you can generate a token, use it to run Django Boot, and then delete it. If you let someone on YouTube, for example, see the token, delete the token before you upload the YouTube video. That way, it won't be a problem. If you are less paranoid, you can make a token and just keep reusing it every time you run Django Go Boot to save yourself some hassle. All right, with our access token in hand, we're just about ready to actually use Django Go Boot. The final thing to be aware of is that the local user on your local computer where you're running Django Go Boot needs to be able to git push to your GitHub account. Uh, that's probably just already set up, but if it's not, just make sure it is. Otherwise, you will see an error when you run Django Go Boot. And with all that out of the way, it's finally time to get this ball rolling. Let us install Django Go Boot. It's very simple. We pip install Django Go Boot. There are quite a few dependencies for Django Go Boot, so you're going to have to wait about a minute, depending on your internet connection, for this to finish. All right, now that Django Go Boot is installed, we can run it. Let's do it. Jang. Go, go, boot. It's that simple. What is the name of our new project? It's DGGB Demo. What is the domain? Well, the domain of the site that we came up with was dggbdemo.frontrowcrew.com. The name of the author, my name. What is my email address? If you feel like emailing me about something, I welcome your messages. Uh, the GitHub access token that we created in the previous step. Let you paste it right here. The SSH hostname of the deployment target. For almost everyone, this is going to be the same as the domain name of the website. The SSH username. That's the username of the user that will has the sudo privileges. We're going to use the default SSH port and the path to the SSH private key. So the user's SSH private key that I created is in this place. It's going to be possibly different for you, wherever you put the key. You're not doing the public key. Not the public key. We are uploading the private key. And the SSH jump host feature will not be used for this project. Now we just wait a minute for Django Go Boot to do its thing. And that's it. Django Go Boot has successfully created our new project. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the files that have been created in the current directory. So you'll see there should be four files now where there used to be zero. Uh, the first two are the deployment keys, public, uh, public and private keys. These are the keys that when deployment is happening, the production server is going to use these keys to access GitHub to pull down source code to the production server. 
you don't actually need these keys for anything. I'm just providing to them to you just in case so you have them. Uh, so just put them in a safe place somewhere. You don't really need them, but don't throw them out. The same thing goes for this, right? Uh, the Django Go boot uh, deployment process uses Ansible, and Ansible stores encrypted variables in what's known as vaults. Uh, it's all automated, so you shouldn't ever need to manually mess with the vault, but in case you do, this file contains the password to decrypt the vault and also to add more encrypted variables to the vault. So take this file and put it in a safe place. The final thing that is created is your actual project. So let's go check it out. DGGB demo. And lo and behold, here we have a pretty normal looking Django project all ready to go. Uh, by default, the project is set up using PyProject2ML and Poetry for package management, though you can easily convert it to use something else if you so desire. Well, now that we've seen what Django Boot did locally, let's go see what it did over on the GitHub side of things. So let's go to that URL that it spat out when it was done. And he, lo and behold, we have a brand new GitHub project, Project DGB Demo Instantiated via Django Boot. Uh, here's all the same code that we saw in the folder on our local computer. And here in the readme file, you can see this tag that indicates our linked code base uh, test passed. Uh, how do we know that? We go to actions. You can see that because code was pushed onto the main branch, that uh, set off these two Django actions. Right? The test action and the lint action are going to fire anytime code is merged into the main branch and also anytime there is code pushed onto a branch with a pull request. So the lint action is going to run GitHub's superlint right, against the code base and give you a report on which things uh, need to be edited for formatting. If there is anything that needs to be edited, you're going to get a red X here. And if there's nothing that needs to be fixed, you'll get a green check. Uh, the other action will run the Django test framework. So you can click here, and we can see that indeed, since it's a brand new project, there were no tests to run. But the Django test framework was indeed executed. Uh, and if there had been even one failing test, uh, this action would have failed. All right, just so we're not deploying a project that has absolutely no pages or anything of note, let's add a home page and one automated test to our project before we start the deployment. Uh, so first things first, in our local project, we're going to do a poetry install. And this will install all of the third-party dependencies pretty quickly. Psycho PG2 usually takes the longest. And we're done. Okay, terrific. Now, let us enter the poetry shell, which will make it easy for us to migrate and create our local test database. Perfect. And next, let us start a new application called Homepage. Let's go into this application. We don't need an admin for this application. We don't need models, and we don't need migrations. We're just going to make a really simple home page. Uh, let us open the views, OK? From Django to HTTP, import HTTP response. And we're going to make our home page view. HTTP response. And you know what? Let's make it a little bit exciting. Me home page with an h1 that looks good to me yes the simplest possible view basically all right let us go back up and add home page to our installed applications check and we'll go to our urls from home page, 
import views as home page views and path home page views dot home page check okay and with that we should have a new home page on our project we have started the server we'll open our web browser We'll visit localhost 8000, and indeed, we do have a home page. Perfect. Uh, now that we have the home page, I just want to add an automated test for this home page. Right? Make sure that it's running. Let's go back into our home page app and edit our test.py. Let's add client in there class home page tests, test case. So home page tests, even though there's only one of them. In the setup, we're going to need a client. Right? Then we're going to need test. Here's our test home page. Okay. Response equals self.client.get. Nothing. So this will make an HTTP request to get the home page. Perfect. And now we're going to assert, assert equal response.status code should be 200. Yep. And let's do one more. Let's response.content should be equal to h1 dggb homepage h1. Very nice. All right, let's run these tests locally to make sure that they pass. Manage pi test. And we have one passing test. Fantastic. So of course, we shouldn't have been working on the main branch this whole time. Let us make a branch. And let's add, let's check to see what we're committing. All right, so we're adding our settings changes, our URLs changes. Yep, our new homepage app to our project. Perfect. Let us commit and we'll say added homepage to project with test and we'll git push origin homepage. Fantastic. We've got this URL now to automatically create a pull request. Let's copy that and paste it over here. Add homepage to project with test, create pull request. Very nice. And now if we go to our GitHub Actions, you can see that the pull request has fired off two more actions. The pull request is being linted and the pull request is being tested. If we go here on the pull request itself, you can see here the tests and the linting are happening. I think the linting is going to fail. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about that now because this is just a demo, but the tests almost definitely will pass. And that's what we're most concerned with. And that's really what I wanted to show you here. Okay. So let's, let's watch the tests happen. And there we are. You can see that the, oh, it's gone. There it is. There we are, you can see there's the one test that we created and it passed successfully. And you can see we now have a green check mark, right? Green check mark on our tests. The linting isn't done yet, but I'm not worried about that. Let's merge this pull request. Merged, done. Okay, and then we can delete this branch, of course. Okay, and now you can see, if we go back to the actions, right? Uh, there was a merge into the main branch, which again, will cause the actions to fire again as sort of an integration test. And as predicted, the lint has failed, but we're not worried about that right now. Okay, so now that our project uh, actually has a homepage and a test to verify that the homepage works, let's get to the exciting part and release it, which will cause an automated deployment to occur. Very simple process. Go over here to where it says releases. Click create a new release. We're going to call this V1. Initial release. Uh, demo project with homepage. 
And all you got to do is push publish release. And now when we go to the action section, you'll see that there is a new type of action that has fired. It is the deploy project action. Now this is going to take quite a bit of time because this is the first ever release for this project. It is going to have to set up the entire production server from scratch. Uh, so I'm not going to make you sit here and wait through all that. We're going to fast forward a little bit. You'll sort of have to trust me <laughs> on it, I guess. You can try it for yourself. Uh, but let's come back when this is done. Okay, that initial deployment took 13 minutes and 47 seconds. But again, I promise you, after the first deployment, the future deployments are much, much quicker. They have a lot less work to do. So, our deployment completed successfully. Let's go see what it did. Let's begin by SSHing to the production server. And let's see what happened. Let's start by running PS tree. Whoa, there's a lot of stuff here now. So what do we have running? It looks like we have Nginx is running, Postgres is running, RabbitMQ is running. Uh, there should be Junicorns and uh, there's a Junicorn. Uh, there should be some Celeries here also, I believe. And just maybe I'm just not seeing them right now. Oh, nope, sure enough, there they are. There are the Celeries. Uh, so yeah, look in our home folder here and look at this, projects, and there it is. There's the source code to our project, uh, and you can see that, yep, sure enough, it's on that new version, right, with the home page, uh, has been sent to the server. So is our project actually running? Can we visit this web page? Let's try it, dggbdemo.frontrowcrew.com. Sure enough, our homepage is live on the internet. And not only is it live on the internet, it is live on the internet with a secure Let's Encrypt SSL already set up perfectly, right? Everything is working. Look, here's our robots.txt. Boom, there it is. Django admin, oop, hold on. There we go. Django admin. Here it is, ready for you to log in. You just have to go and create a user on your server, right? Um, but yeah, how awesome is that? We did a single command that created our project, and then all we had to do was click release, right? This release button in order to deploy to a real live production server. No weird containers, no software as a service products that cost money, nothing. Just GitHub and one command. Good to go with Django Boot. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I hope you find Django Boot to be a useful tool for you. I hope that you maybe come help me improve it a great deal. Um, and even if you don't use Django Go Boot, I hope that you look at the source code of Django Go Boot and its template, which are in two separate repositories, and maybe learn something from them. Uh, so that's been the Django Go Boot demo. Uh, enjoy.